We're over on router one right now because one thing I want to do, is we didn't put a loop back on router one. And it would be interesting since we know that each spoke is not seeing the other spokes loop back. Let's put a loop back on router one, advertise it, and see if the spokes see that. Almost put no auto again, just out of habit. That work one 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 zero. Now it's going to run two fifty five. Now we'll go ahead and put a hose mask on it. Nice try. Almost had you. There we go. So we'll put zero 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 there to advertise only that particular interface. And now let's go down to router two. And there it is. So router two right now is getting the loop back on the hub, but it's not seeing the loop back on the other spoke. Let's check pingability here. No relation to Wessonality, and there we go. So let me bring that back up. That's the touchpad. So we've got router two. Let's go over to three. And there's the router one loop back. So we have something really odd going here, and it's actually a default that can trip you up a little bit. we got to be careful with it. It's something called split horizon. And the problem is, it's, it's one of these things that comes with a huge benefit and can also cause issues as well. Because split horizon is an important routing loop prevention behavior. And we're talking about routing loops here. Of course, we're at layer three in a routing course. And the deal right now is this. Spoke-to-spoke -spoke communications have to go through the hub. There is no dedicated connection right now between routers two and three. So if router two sends something to router three, it has to go up through router one and then right back out. And that's where split horizon comes in. Because you can see some really technical definitions of split horizon are like six lines long. But here's, here's the nitty gritty. It dictates that a router can't advertise a route back out the same interface upon which that route was originally learned. Nothing to it. So right now, router 1 is learning about router 3's loopback via an EIGRP update received on serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. The thing is, router 1 now cannot advertise that same network out that same interface, and that's the only way router 1 has to talk to router 2. So 2 can't possibly learn about that network. And the thing is, router 1 is also learning about router 2's loopback via an update on that same interface, serial one, uh, 0 slash 1 slash 0, and router 1 can't advertise that network back out the same interface. So that's why our spokes aren't seeing the loop back on the other spoke. Now, thankfully for us, split horizon can be disabled. And in a lab environment, it doesn't really worry me to do that, you know, mostly. But in a production network, you want to be really careful about doing that because you might get the result you want. You might get the routes advertised where you want them, but you might get other results that you don't want. Now, Split Horizon, is it's interesting. It's disabled at the interface level. And with EIGRP commands, you almost always have to specify which autonomous system you're talking about. So let's go ahead and go up to Router 1 fix that. Here we go. Yeah, my little key combination there. So let's go up to one. And no IP split is the way the command starts. Then you need to put EIGRP in. Then you need to put the AS number in. And then finally, you are done. Now here's a little something we ought to be aware of. And this, is, this differs with iOS versions. The NP exam is not going to get into iOS differences, but it used to be that when you did this, the connections just dropped, the adjacencies dropped. Uh, what they do now is they resync, and when you uh, turn Split Horizon off. So if we run Show IP EIGRP Neighbor, you'll notice that those adjacencies were not totally reset. Because, again, that's what used to happen. It's one of the things um, you turn Split Horizon off and you would get these messages that say the neighbor is down. And then a minute or so later, they'd come back up. But now we really like this. This is a newer thing. It resyncs and we don't lose the adjacency totally. So the, uh, the proof is in the virtual pudding. So let's go down to router 2. 
And now we've got a route for 3333. And now we can ping it. And just to be sure, go over to router 3. Now we've got the route for 2222. And there you go. So we have turned Split Horizon off. Again, it's on by default. And you really want to be careful about changing that in a production network. Now, let's see. We want to go. We've got those. We're going to add a network to our lab next and go through some lab work with this. So I'm going to stop this particular video here. What we'll be doing is adding uh, routers 2 and 3, the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interfaces. We're going to put these in on the 172.12.23.0 slash 27 network. And we'll do that at the very beginning of the next lab.